So good morning uh, and welcome to the uh, IXP workshop here. It's great to see so many, so many people here in the room. But I'm um, Bijal Sangani working at uh, EuroIX and today I'm going to talk about a little bit about what EuroIX is, um, a little bit about uh, IXPs around the world um, and uh, also uh, I'm hopefully going to give you a little bit of a demo on uh, the tools that we have available on the website. So, right, so EuroIX. EuroIX is an association for internet um, exchange points, and what we do is we uh, promote an open uh, interchange of ideas, sharing experiences, um, and uh, off we have two meetings a year um, mm -hmm. where all the members get together and they discuss current issues and new trends that are happening uh, within internet exchanges, new technologies. And really, it's just a it's just a way to uh, exchange ideas and uh, share experiences, and also there's quite a lot of uh, networking that, that goes on there as well. So, why does EuroIX do uh, what it does? Really, it's for uh, the good of the IXP community. Um, we have, like I said, two forums a year. The last one we had was in Helsinki at the end of uh, October, and we had 116. Uh, attendees, uh, and that was representing 42 internet exchanges. So, although I say EuroIX, you, you know, you may think that it's just European exchanges, but actually, um, in uh, 2005, we opened the doors for um, uh, exchanges outside of Europe, and uh, so there was 42 internet exchanges present at the uh, at the forum in Helsinki, which was uh, which is actually one of the best turnouts. Uh, we have a website, uh, a database and tools, which I'm going to uh, talk a bit more about later. Uh, we have mailing lists, um, and actually the mailing lists are really active. We have uh, a members mailing list, we have technical mailing lists, we have mailing lists for root servers, so it's all very IXP uh, specific. Uh, we also have uh, working groups and task forces, so if there is uh, any particular work that needs to be done, uh, we get together volunteers from the membership, and they, uh, you know, they, they, they fix whatever is wrong or put together new documents. Uh, for example, best practices. Um, we've uh, set up a data task force uh, at the end of last year, and uh, they're working really well because we're looking to build a new uh, database. Uh, we have a close relationship with the IEEE uh, Ethernet Study Group, and um, so any new technologies that are, uh, that are coming up from the IEEE, they uh, come and present them uh, at the EuroX forums or share the information within, uh, within the membership. Uh, we produce a, a IXP report, and some of those results I'm going to share with you uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, we also offer a twinning program, and that is uh, for IXPs in need. So, if uh, a lot of our twins are actually in Africa and uh, South America and in uh, Asia, so uh, not that that's limited to where we twin, but what that means is an established IXP can twin with uh, an IXP in need and just help them. Uh, whether that means training, technical assistance, or just somebody on the other end of the phone that you can call, and if you have, uh, if, if the uh, IXPs have any questions or problems, that's just somebody that they can uh, talk to. Um, some other projects that we work on. Uh, last year was a really big sporting year. I don't know how many of you are into uh, football or uh, the Olympics. Um, we had uh, the Olympics last year, and there was, uh, I think it's the Euros football last year. And uh, we worked on a project with the RIPE NCC. And um, do all of you know who the RIPE NCC are? Okay, well, Vesna will, uh, Vesna will talk about that <laughs> later on. So we did a, a really good project where we actually monitored the uh, traffic at the, different, uh, the various different internet exchanges around Europe. Uh, to see how uh, the different sporting events um, actually uh, caused an increase or decrease in traffic. Um, so what was really interesting there was that um, you know during um, during the Olympics where there was the, the w there was one one day where uh, it, there was the uh, the heptathlon and the tennis 
um, which was all during the day, on a weekday, uh, we saw a significant increase in traffic at uh, you know, a number of internet exchanges. Um, something else that we looked at was the, uh, the French Open last, uh, this year for the tennis. So this year was actually the first time that the French Open actually fell over, the final fell over onto the Monday because, the, um, because of bad weather on Sunday. So on Monday, uh, if we look at the, the traffic at the France ex uh, French and Snow Exchange, France IX, um, there was clearly a really big spike in traffic, which showed that you know most probably people at work were uh, were actually logging on and watching the tennis because uh, it was done during the day. So yeah, there was some interesting things that we're working on, and we, we continue to do that. And we produce the reports. The reports on the tennis and the Olympics are all on uh, Ripe Labs which I'm sure, again, Fessner will uh, mention later. Uh, we have uh, benchmarking, and this is done on a voluntary basis, and we produce a report. Um, and what this looks at, it looks at all sorts of things related to an IXP. So it can be from uh, port pricing uh, to the number of staff members you have, for example, in marketing or engineering, uh, and uh, different fees, different... Um, it's a really, really wide range of uh, topics that we look at. And we produce a report. And what that does is it helps, for example, new IXPs who are coming into the market and are not sure how to price, how to do pricing. So you can look at that and get an idea of the different ranges of pricing that's, uh, that's available in, in Europe. Uh, and lastly on the list, we have the uh, staff exchange programs. And this again, this has been quite, quite interesting and very popular with the, uh, with the IXPs. And um, we had AMSIX, which is the Amsterdam Internet Exchange, um, did a staff exchange with PTT uh, in Brazil. And uh, although both of them are pretty well established IXPs, what they, what they found was that they were questioning each other on uh, you know the, the the processes that were used, and uh, they were able to give each other new ideas, uh, which which was really which they found really really useful. So currently, uh, I talked about the membership. So we have 75 affiliated members. We have had a really good year this year, and we got 12 new members. Um, so and that is 51 IXPs in Europe. So that's uh, 30 countries and 24 ISPs from uh, around the world. Our newest members uh, include the internet exchanges from Kosovo, Tunisia, Congo, uh, United Arab Emirates, Zambia, Can we had two from uh, Canada this year, uh, South, South Africa, uh, Torex also in Canada, Australia, uh, NAP Africa, uh, Poland and uh, Germany. We also have a program which is uh, quite similar to uh, a sponsorship program, but it's, uh, we call them patrons. And patrons are uh, industry-related uh, organizations, for example, vendors, uh, hosting companies, uh, and um, uh, yeah, hosting, and yeah, vendors, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so we've got 11 of those, and uh, they are, uh, we, we see the patrons that are, are actually very similar to uh, our membership, uh, sorry, to the IXP members, so they're invited to the forums um, and, can, uh, and, and are actually really part of the EuroIX uh, membership, so it's not just for uh, IXPs, but we do invite uh, uh, industry-related uh, organisations to join as well. So, um, we saw the first, in, in, Euro, in the EuroIX region, uh, we saw the first, which is the, the light blue area there, we saw the first IXPs around in uh, 1993. And since then, you can see that there has been a steady growth of IXPs in Europe. Now, you know, even uh, initially you saw quite a few which were, you know, one per city or one per country. But now what we're seeing more and more is, uh, you know, other cities in the particular country are also uh, n feeling that, uh, another IXP in that country or even in the city uh, for resilience or whatever is, uh, is needed. And, you know, if it's something that the community feel that uh, it, it's important, then, 
so it's uh, it, it's happened, and uh, you can see that the the growth is uh, still growing. Uh, and this is this is uh, what is going on in Europe right now. So we have uh, 161 known IXPs in the EuroIX region. So I say known because you know we're we're constantly hearing about new IXPs that are being turned up in cities that we're not aware of, and it's like, oh yeah, we've been around for six months, and we're like, ah, oh. so we add them to the database. So you know there are new IXPs that are that are being bought up uh, all the time, and um, we try and keep track of uh, of all the all the ones that are uh, uh, that are live. So that's 161 known IXPs in the EuroX region. That's 48 out of the 50 countries, and 123 cities in Europe have IXPs. And this graph here shows uh, the traffic growth uh, from uh, December last year, so the past uh, 12 months. What you can see here quite clearly is that there is a, a significant a significant dip in December and in uh, July. Any, anyone want to guess why? <laughs> Holidays. So um, that's uh, we see that every year. Uh, very very clear dip uh, around Christmas time, uh, New Year, when everyone's uh, off, probably not on not on the internet and uh, ha actually having a break. Uh, and we see that in uh, July, August as well, when uh, people are going off on holidays. Although that has um, changed a little, because the dip was a lot more. You'd see it quite clearly through from almost June to August. So this has changed a little. Um, and I guess with um, most people having their own uh, devices, it's, uh, it's, it's quite actually difficult not to be online than it is to be online. So. Uh, so the dip has, uh, has, has uh, changed a little, but we still see that. So uh, what I wanted to show on, on this uh, chart here is that, um, you know, IXPs vary. It's not just IXPs have to have, uh, a, you know, a particular type of membership or a particular number of members to be uh, kind of, you know, noticed as an IXP. So within the EuroIX membership, we do have members that have got between three and ten uh, <coughs> members. So I'm counting them as ASNs. So there are, you know, there are um, IXPs around that have a smaller number of members, and um, and then of course, you know, you've got the the bigger ones which have um, which have 300 plus. But uh, you know, you do see there is. You know, there there is a a large amount with uh, between I'd say <coughs> twenty and uh, I'd say between eleven and a hundred is is probably uh, the, the largest uh, the largest portion. So uh, between eleven, so it's about ten, ten, nineteen, nineteen. It's about <coughs> forty. <coughs> So uh, they all have 300 plus. Yeah, I don't know. The ex I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but they're they're 300 plus. So AM6, DKIX, Lynx, uh, Moscow, uh, IX, and PTT. They all have uh, over 300 members connected. I'm sorry, I oh. have to ask. What about Matrix in Macedonia? Does it exist? We met guys last yes, time. Yes, we met them last time in, uh, where was that, in Skopje. And um, from what I understand, they're still working on the build and uh, they only have, I think, one or two members connected. But they have a perfect... Uh, we have somebody from oh, Macedonia okay. at the end. <laughs> oh, hi. So, uh, yeah, so uh, they're, they're, they're not currently a EuroIX member, um, but... Uh, they're, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, <coughs> the gentleman in the back has a bit more information. Please feel free to come up. Um, or if there's a spa spare mic. Do you, uh, are you aware of the, uh, it's, it's, it's in conjunction with the university actually. Are you aware of the uh, matrix? So, uh, Matrix will be managed by, by Macedonian Academic and yeah. Research Network by Marlon. So we are, in the phase of constructing the the building, and uh, we expect that in the from the beginning of the year we can uh, start with the uh, 
matrix and to, to invite participants to be connected. Great. OK, perfect. Great. I should speak to you about Eurax membership then. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Sasha. 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 Okay, Sasha from Madrid. Are you a part of the uh, the uh, the university there, the academic or? Well, since 2011, Marnet is uh, uh, a new public institution, so it, uh, Marnet is not under the. <coughs> okay. Mm. So uh, the plan with Matrix, which is the uh, internet exchange in Macedonia, uh, is that they're, they're working on the infrastructure right now and they expect to start connecting members uh, from early next year. Okay, so as I talked about the, uh, the, uh, the IXP report, um, I'm going to show you some statistics from, from the report. So first of all, this is, um, so what we ask our members to do is we have a number of different databases and we ask the members to keep all their data in the databases updated. And this includes uh, which vendors are being used. So here we can see that um, the, the, the different members, the different vendors that are being used within the EuroIX membership and also a couple of the IXs that are actually uh, using them. So in the last two years, we've had two new uh, vendors um, also join as patrons, but also be introduced uh, to IXPs, and that is um, Juniper, and uh, we have two IXPs that are using that, and that's Lynx and uh, Vix, which is in Italy, and uh, DKIX uh, uh, rolled out a new platform using uh, Alcatel Lucent. So, um, these are, these are the new ones. Um, Brocade, Cisco, Extreme, um, Dell, Force 10 uh, have, been, have been around for a while, as you can probably see by the, by the number of um, uh, IXPs that are, that are using them. So, Vijay, sorry, it's Mike Hughes there. Um, that, back to that <coughs> slide in terms of number of this is actually in terms of devices, total devices deployed. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Just checking where, where, what, how the volume was calculated. Right. Yeah. So uh, Mike just asked if this is uh, if this if this represents the uh, what numbers it represents, and it is actually all the switches that are in a particular uh, IX is collected, and then that, that that's all aggregated. And just to be clear, how that was being calculated, it wasn't on traffic or anything like that. Just no. Just <laughs> just the yeah just. Yeah, I can build a hundred switch exchange point and have absolutely no traffic over it and use yeah. only go to two thousand switches I got off the back of the truck. Yeah. And, and that would fill make Tai Chi look very different. <coughs> yeah. No, these are actually the live uh, the live switches in use. Maybe as, as a suggestion it would be nicer to see a number of ports. The statistics should be based on number of ports, maybe just suggesting. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Matt has just said that uh, another a, a suggestion would be to actually look at the number of ports that are in use yeah. um, within the within the IX or uh, and then get that data up. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, something we can look into for sure. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, the number of, uh, sorry, not number, uh, the root servers that are uh, in use within the Eurex membership. So how many of you here know what a root server is? Okay, good, because uh, Harold is uh, later on going to actually be talking about root servers, so you'll all learn what root servers is. So. Um, before he does that, I, these are these are a couple of the the root server uh, daemons that are uh, available um, to use, and uh, this is what has been used in uh, the URIX membership. Uh, so we've uh, we also have a look at what kind of uh, members are connected to the internet exchanges. So here we can see. Um, uh, what uh, obviously the, the, the largest number is the uh, the uh, dedicated uh, hosting providers, but there's also uh, adult hosting, content providers, uh, VoIP providers, e-commerce providers, enterprise gambling companies. They're all present at internet exchanges. 
So what, what we're trying to show here is that it's not just um, ISPs that <coughs> connect to the internet exchanges, it's, you know, any, uh, it's, a, it's a number of different types of networks that, that can connect. So after all that, you're probably, well, you might still be wondering, so what is the benefits of, uh, of an IXP? So um, what do IXPs actually do? So IXPs enable local traffic to stay local. Uh, this, therefore, increases uh, efficiency of internet traffic and allows settlement-free peering rather than paying for transit, i.e. it reduces your cost. Um, it reduces latency because you're much closer to uh, to the uh, to uh, oh my god the word's gone out of my head you're much closer to the end uh, end device yes thank you um, it allows and encourages uh, content to be accessed locally so for example if you ha are if you want to host something uh, you know, in your own language and you connected it to the internet exchange then that's going to be a, a lot easier to access uh, <coughs> uh, it reduces dependency on critical national infrastructure so for example if you are buying transit and there is uh, a problem then uh, you may lose connectivity with an internet exchange if you're connected that's you know, of course, you can't uh, ever say it's never going to happen, but it's less likely to happen. Um, local content business has a higher chance of success because you are hosting it uh, locally. Um, you have a greater chance of the local businesses to survive. Um, and it can increase knowledge sharing and experiences via IXP meetings and mailing lists. So, you know, we have this IXP meeting here. and. A lot of the um, IXPs uh, do hold member meetings uh, and it's just an opportunity for uh, not necessarily just the local networks to get together but you know others as well to come together and have discussions, share information, kind of like what we're going to be doing in the next two days. So um, it it's, uh, it's, you know, increases knowledge and helps people share ideas and experiences. So I've talked uh, about um, Eurex, so now uh, I want to introduce um, the other IXP uh, associations. So in Africa, there is um, an AFIX. Um, in Asia, there's APIX. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, there's a LACIX. And uh, these are how they are uh, distributed. So uh, again, you can, if, if you know the, uh, the RIPE NCC region, then you'll recognize that we've kind of uh, copied that because uh, we feel that it, it, it just makes sense. So you can see that the Eurix region in blue, this is uh, APIX, LACIX, and AFIX. There is a little, it's white, but probably should be gray area there for uh, North America. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, saying that a lot of the uh, IXs or uh, the uh, hosting companies in North America are actually members of EuroIX. So, um, at the end of um, 2012, the uh, IXPAs, so uh, actually it was APIX, EuroIX and uh, LACIX got together and we decided to sign an MOU to uh, form the, uh, an Internet Exchange Point Federation. And um, what one of the big ideas on, on, on this is to have a global IXP database. And this is something that we're, we're now currently uh, working on. Um, EuroX has the database, um, but, we've, but we feel that it's not, it's not global enough. And having all of the IXPA associations working with their members to make sure that the, the, the databases are completed for each of the regions. Uh, we, we, you know, we thought this was, this was a good idea and also to get as much information and data about IXPs from around the world as possible. So that you know, we can come to places, we can come here and show you some really interesting statistics. Um, the other, what else we're planning on doing is setting standards. So uh, we're talking about setting global standards for IXPs. Um, we're planning on uh, having uh, uh, BCPs also for um, IXPs, and that will be also on a, on a global level, not just for Europe. 
Um, and we have plans to collaborate with other um, external databases. So, for example, um, PeeringDB. Does everyone know what PeeringDB is? Oh, okay. All right. So, if you are a network, um, and uh, you should all uh, have a look at PeeringDB.com and put your uh, put your data in there. Actually, whether you're a network or an IXP. Uh, you'll find a, it's a wealth of information, and um, you know. Mo in fact, some some networks refuse to peer with people that are not in peering DB. So it's really important to get your information in there. Excuse me. Uh, maybe I did miss. Uh, what is the relationship between UREX and uh, peering DB? Uh, well, at the moment, there's no real relationship. We're currently still in talks, but the idea is, is with the with the database uh, planning, the plan is to actually uh, exchange data. So what we'll what we've agreed so far is that the IXP database will be the master on internet exchanges, and PeeringDB will hold all the information on networks and. Um, data centers. So then we can cross-reference each other and uh, get information for data centers uh, and networks from PeeringDB while they can get information on internet exchanges from the IXP database. Okay, I only ask because uh, only five of SOX members actually uh, have a PeeringDB account. Ah, okay. The others do not see the benefit. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be used for cross-referencing um, and, and, and just checking data as well. So if you're not in PeeringDB, you really uh, should take a look. And um, It doesn't take long. <laughs> okay, so uh, we had a look at uh, what was going on in Europe. So let's have a look at what's going on in the rest of the world in terms of IXPs and traffic. So here we have um, Africa. This is the FIX region. And um, in Africa, there is currently 20 known, 29 uh, known IXPs compared to 161 in Europe. So you can see that there is a lot of space for growth in Africa. Um, and out of that, that's 22 out of uh, 54 countries. And 28 cities in Africa have, have IXPs. And here is the uh, the uh, traffic uh, traffic growth here. Again, you can see a little a little dip in the in the summer months, but generally that's that's all going up and to the right. Jacques, uh, sorry, just a question. So the red ones are live ones, and the no, sorry. So the red ones are um, are not members of either EuroIX or FI or any of the IXPAs. Uh, the blue ones are all members of uh, your either EuroIX or FIX. So in Cote d'Ivoire, I don't know if I've got I don't know if I've got Cote d'Ivoire on there actually because uh, that's yes. quite a new one. Oh yes, I do. Yes. I just came from there as well. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So it's blue because I believe they've or they've already spoken to FIX about becoming members. So. Do you happen to have a traffic level for Mauritius Internet Exchange? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no this is uh, this is the uh, it's aggregated. So no. And in Asia, so uh, in Asia we have uh, 79 known IXPs in the uh, APIX region. That's 20 out of the 48 countries have an IXP. Um, and that's 46 cities. So again, going back to, if you remember the numbers from Europe, um, you know, it was, it was 50 out of 52, no, 52 out of the 54 countries have an IXP. So again, in Asia you can see that there is a lot of room for growth uh, there as well. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Is there so, a correlation? Sorry. Just commenting on the chat. Yeah, I, I'm actually not aware of any uh, IXs in China. I don't know if uh, anyone else. No, I don't think there is. But um, anyway, uh, there is in Hong Kong, um, but not 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 in China, as far as I know. Um, Again, we see the uh, again we see the the dip in traffic in the in the summer months there, and then the big the big increase. 
Uh, North America, there is uh, 70 known IXPs in North America. That's uh, two out of two countries, so that's uh, America and Canada. Uh, and 41 cities in uh, North America have, have IXPs, and this is the, uh, the traffic. Uh, again, you've got the, the, the dip in the summer and then the, the big incline afterwards. But the general trend is growing over the years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The traffic is growing, definitely. Um, okay, so uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was back in 2008, um, a couple of the IXPs uh, within uh, EuroIX decided, uh, thought that uh, there needed to be something, uh, a way to explain uh, better what, uh, how the internet worked or and just a little bit of an explanation on uh, what an IXP is. So we put together a video. Um, I'm not sure if I've got time to show the you video do. right now. I do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, okay, so uh, what I'm going to do next is actually do a demo, uh, a demo of the website so that you can see um, the tools, how to use the tools and just where to, where to go for the tools. Um, and then after that, we can uh, we can watch watch the video. Um, so this, the the video is now available in uh, quite a few languages. It's uh, set myself a little mission to get it in as many languages as I can. So we've got it in French, Turkish, Spanish, Romanian, Italian, Russian, Portuguese, and German. Uh, we, there is a EuroIX uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you know if you're interested in translating it into uh, your own language. Then, uh, then please uh, contact me. Um, conclusion, so uh, EuroIX and the other IXPs are associations for internet exchanges. So what's funny is when I, when I first meet people and I say, oh, I'm from EuroIX, they're like, oh, okay, how much does uh, 100, 100 gig, uh, sorry, I should say 100 gig, 10, uh, 100 meg port cost or a gig port cost. And uh, so I always have to say, no, we don't actually sell uh, ports or anything, you know, we're just an association for internet exchanges. So what I can give you is information on internet exchanges as I've just presented. But if you want to connect, you need to speak to uh, Zoran for, <laughs> for uh, Serbia. We can give you affiliate contracts. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, you know, again, it's going back to, uh, you know, EuroX is a knowledge base. Um, we share ideas and experiences, and again, this is done via the, the website and the forums. And, um, you know, I talked a bit, little bit about the IXP database, which is uh, a tool for the community. Thank you. I'm not finished. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can take some questions now, by the way. Just a quick question. You said that now it's forming up the IXF yep. Federation. Yeah. Where did this <laughs> It's virtual. <laughs> it's not. Uh, no. The way that the, the federation is actually going to be run is that there is going to be an administ administrator. So each one of the IXPAs, so EuroIX, APIX, and uh, LACIX, and eventually AFIX, will all have will all be a, uh, taking the administrator role for two years. Currently, because um, uh, because the other IXPAs are in such, uh, I wouldn't quite say infant stage, but perhaps moving on to like LACIX and APIX at least are kind of moving on to their teenage years. Um, you know, they, they don't have the resources either. So EuroIX actually is the only uh, association that has any like real resources. So we, so EuroIX is going to be the administrator for the federation until uh, the other IXPAs are ready, and then we can uh, move it along to somebody else. But it will be, once everything's a bit more established, it will be on rotation for every two years. So each of us gets a, uh, a chance. It's like an award, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Presidency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the Lord of Ring want to rule them all. Yes. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Okay, right, now I'm gonna attempt to do this demo and try not to. Okay, so this is the uh, EuroIX website. Um, now what you've got here is uh, 
the about section uh, on the on the left hand side uh, and for ISPs. So I'm just going to show you quickly. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you also have to be careful because I'm used to using a Mac and it doesn't do the. It's not quite the same. Uh. So we have uh, a section here for um, ISPs. Um, it's not just for ISPs. It's also it's for uh, networks. So you can look at um, you know joining an IXP. Um, how how do you choose an IXP? Uh, there's also a number of resources available. Uh, so here we have a list of IXPs, and you know I showed you some of the the traffic graphs earlier, and what you've got uh, on on the on the page that's about to uh, come up is uh, all the different um, the, the uh, IXPs, but also you can see uh, their their traffic and a link to their their website. So this is probably going to take a while to come up. Um, the uh, the uh, Eurex reports that I talked about earlier, which has uh, which has uh, the uh, some of the some of the statistics that I showed during my presentation, but also uh, but also others. So if you're interested in looking at more of the the data, the reports are now re uh, released from in uh, January. Uh, they were originally done from August to uh, September, but we've, uh, we've changed that to make it uh, annual, so the reports are now, the data is captured from January to December, so the reports are released in around February time. So you'll see the, the one for next year will be then. Um, okay, uh, what I wanted to show you here was the, the different tools. So we have um, the ASN filter. Now, what this allows you to do is to look at the different. Is to look at um, is to look at the IXPs, uh, and you can uh, look at the, the the number of which ASNs are connected to which IXPs. Uh, but also, if you want to compare, so if you want to see which IXPs are connected to. Uh, uh, IXP A and which ones are not connected or also connected to IXP B, you can do things like comparisons uh, and also just uh, also list them. Uh, this is also the uh, ASN database. So if you put in um, an ASN here, uh, you can do a search and you can see which IXs it's connected to. Does anyone want to shout out an ASN? Any networks here? Two one zero seven. Two one zero seven. A little commercial. There you go. <laughs> Connected to six. <laughs> or try five six oh three. Which one? Five six oh three. It's your own. Five six oh three. This is telecom studio. Right. Yeah. So. Eight four zero zero. Sure. <laughs> Eight four zero. That's more like it. <laughs> there you go. So you can see that you are connected. Is that your AS? Yes. Right, and you're connected to M six D kicks, fix, and links. Is that right? Yeah. Socks. Socks is not the database yet. We're six on mix. <laughs> oh no, that says they're not connected on IPv6. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So which one? So you can. So actually, um, what we've done is it's also links into. So those that haven't seen Peering DB before, here's a perfect. Uh, so from the Eurox database, we already started linking the AS numbers. So if you click on the AS number, um, you will uh, it will bring you to uh, your your Peering DB record. So well done for getting that in there as well. But you know you can see the the different information that can be uh, captured in there. Am I in the way? No. Okay. You have two more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, we also have the uh, newest ASN database. So um, you know, like I said, the members update their uh, their data pretty regularly, and you can see December third, which was uh, yesterday. Um, you know, we had a couple of uh, all these all these were. Um, updated 
all these new ASNs were actually added. Added then. Is it done uh, via BGP or you have to send an email or something? It's done two ways. Um, you can do automatically via uh, CVS or manually. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, another tab which shows the most common um, ASNs. And this is basically just uh, shows which, uh, which ASNs are present at the most, at the most exchanges. Uh, okay, I don't have long left, so I'm going to show the video now. Um, Ah, the uh, yeah. so here we we collect um, we collect as much uh, data as possible. So it's not just from the um, the uh, URIX members. Uh, but also from uh, from other IXs in, in Europe and around the world, and here we've uh, we, we you can see the uh, the, the traffic uh, where available uh, of all the different uh, IXs. So if in you're looking for investment, putting up the graph will help people see how much traffic you have. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, having, having this information publicly available, uh, you know, helps, helps other people uh, look at whether, uh, you know, they're going to connect to you and, uh, and how they're going to connect. So please take, a, you know, take some time and uh, have a look on the Eurox website. It's, uh, you know, it's lots of information there. I've only covered a little bit. Um, and you know, if you have, if you do have questions, uh, then um, you can drop me a mail. For now, did we get the uh, audio? When you use the internet, what happens? Whether you go online to chat with a friend, or send mail, or buy a book, or check the weather, watch a movie, or study the Peloponnesian War. It feels like there's one wire connecting you directly to the thing you want. But a billion other people are connecting to a billion other things at the same time. How does that happen? It's really about making agreements. Think of networking as a game. It only works if we agree to play by the same rules. Otherwise, it's not much fun. If you can get two or more computers to play together, you have a network. If your friend can do it too, there's another network. But if you both agree that your networks will play the same way, now you can hook the two together. You have an internetwork. The rules we play by are called the internet protocol. And as long as we all agree, we can keep adding more devices and more networks until the whole world is connected. That's what the internet is, a network of networks that share each other. Every device on the internet has its own unique address. Anything you send via internet is really just a message from one device to another. But it doesn't travel in one big block. It gets pulverized into tiny packets of data, each one wrapped with info about what it is, where it came from, and where it's going. This way, your one message can actually take several different paths to its destination. Then, by following the protocol, the receiving device knows how to put it all back together. The strength of the internet is that it's decentralized. With so many possible connections, there is no single point of failure. If one path gets overloaded or broken, your data just takes a different path. Even if a big chunk of the internet gets wiped out, your message can still find its way. 
But let's say you use one internet provider and your friend is on a different one. How does your data really get from one network to the other? Some companies make private connections with each other to exchange traffic. But more and more traffic is flowing through shared service platforms we call internet exchange points. An internet exchange is a place where many different organizations come together to interconnect their technology. There may be access providers, broadcasters, publishers, social network sites, telecom operators. Really anybody who relies on network traffic can benefit from the exchange. By connecting in a common place, they save costs, and the traffic between them flows faster and much more efficiently. Traditionally, providers have sold each other passage on their networks. But for some providers who regularly exchange traffic, all that buying and selling can get to be more trouble than it's worth. Many of them saw that if they just agree to meet each other halfway, then everybody's costs go down and the traffic moves more smoothly. Providers are able to make a single connection to the platform to exchange traffic with many participants. This way of doing things is called peering, and it's making the internet faster and more affordable for everybody. The exchange participants make deals with each other according to mutual benefit, so the peering system tends to regulate itself. It may seem like companies are giving away their services, but in fact, each is providing their part of the whole solution their customers need to most efficiently and reliably exchange traffic. The internet is open, decentralized, and totally neutral. Its intelligence lives at the edge, not in the core. No single organization controls it, and that's why it works as well as it does. By agreeing to cooperate, we all make the internet happen. And that's how the internet happens. We have actually come to our We're coffee break. And yeah. uh, so I think we should probably just give a hand of applause oh, uh, for Bijal and... Uh,